Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling. I'm your host, JP John Paz. With me today is the current Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, the walking weapon himself, Mr. Josh Alexander. Josh, welcome to the two-man power trip. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. Man, what's going on in your world? I know, obviously, being the Impact World Champion, but uh, you're on a whirlwind here. You're very, very busy. Yes, yes. Uh, being world champion has its own demands that add to the pile that I already had. But, uh, yeah, just professional wrestling at its best. Pretty awesome, though, to see you like really getting your chance of getting your shot because you've been hitting home runs. You know what I mean? You've been knocking it out of the park. No, I do my best every single time. That's kind of like the, the thing that is held consistent through my entire career is you'll always get – you know, 100% max effort every time. And, you know, as you get more skills and you learn more things along the years, it just gets easier and easier and you start getting a little bit of fanfare for it. So I'm very proud of it. You got some big shows coming up in Louisville, Kentucky, July 15th and 16th. Tell us a little bit about those big shows in Louisville. Uh, Derby City Rumble television tapings in Louisville, Kentucky on the 15th and 16th, Friday and Saturday evening. We return to Louisville. Uh, the venue is amazing. You know, bowl seating around, and then it has a balcony around the top. It's just completely immersive for the fans. Uh, and, you know, Impact Wrestling, it's a hot ticket. We have something for everybody, whether you like high-flying, uh, you know, X-Division action, we have that. We have the Knockouts, which to me is the premier female uh, division in all of pro wrestling. And we have hard-hitting action supplied by the likes of myself and, you know, Mike Bailey and many other people. So we got something for everybody. Yeah, Impact, if you look at it, it's kind of under the radar, but you got a ton of great talent there that uh, even like Speedball. I mean, he, he's been great forever, but like finally getting uh, some recognition. Yeah, and it, I think it holds true with Speedball, myself, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, you know, Tasha Steeles, uh, Jordan Grace. You can go, the list goes on. And I think that's what made Impact special from the very beginning was that when this company started, sure, you had people that you could recognize and stuff, but they also made their own stars. And people like AJ Styles and Abyss and all these other people that you go on to now, they're they're memorable forever. These are superstars and legends in our business. And the same thing is happening in Impact now. They're investing in the future. Uh, we're building our own homegrown stars. We're giving opportunities left and right to you know different people all the time. And everybody's chomping at the bit, has a chip on their shoulder to prove everybody that uh, you know they are some of the best wrestlers in the world. And that's what makes our show so special. Going all the way back to Bound for Glory 2021, you beat Christian Cage. You know, you're on top of the mountain. You're the world champion. Moose steals it away from you. But, you know, that that starts a nice little journey for you. What was it like, you know, being champion for you know, a minute and then him to take it away? I mean, it, to me, it was like nothing I ever thought possible to wrestle Christian Cage, you know, regardless of it being in the main event of the biggest show in Impact Wrestling, you know, on pay-per-view. Uh, just to be able to wrestle Christian Cage uh, was an honor, something I never thought possible, like I said. To have the title ripped away and all that other stuff, uh, you know, it, it made it that much sweeter when I finally did win the championship at Rebellion because, you know, when I won that championship initially from Christian Cage at Bound for Glory, fans recognized me as somebody that was very good in the ring like my my whole thing for fanfare up until that point was that i always deliver no matter who i'm in the ring with and that's something that i take a great amount of pride in but you know that whole seven month run from bound for glory to rebellion was where fans really got to know me where i really got to talk and show my personality a little bit more so you know it added another layer to me so now that i've won the championship i just have that much more familiarity with me with the fans and stuff like that so there's more of a connection so it's better and it's almost like, oh, they were so happy you beat Christian, you know, great win, and then they, they get it taken away. They want that journey back to the title. Like, they're following you every step of the way. Yeah, and I think for the most part, if you look at, like, wrestling history, that's what it's all about, you know? Like, when I got into professional wrestling, it was all about Stone Cold Steve Austin chasing that title at WrestleMania 14. Like, that's, that's what got me as a fan. That's what started this whole obsession and you know i could name countless other times in pro wrestling history where that's been the story arc and it's all about the chase usually so uh now that i've won the championship it's all about you know sustaining uh whatever i can with what i do and what a, whatever my next goal might be but yeah building a legacy you know what i mean you want to be that you know you want to be the longest running champ or you want to be the best champ right yeah well to me it's when I think of, uh, you know, Impact Wrestling, I close my eyes and I, I see AJ Styles right away. He's like the name that is synonymous with this brand still, even though he hasn't been here in, you know, nearly a decade. And 
I would like to be somebody that's named, you know, beside him as one of the greatest of all time in this company's history by the time I'm done doing what I'm doing. So what was it like at Rebellion? You beat Moose, but the entrance, everybody talking about Jet, the, you know, your son, everybody's talking about the entrance. That was great. That was like, you know, something special because you kind of get even more attached to you because, you know, you're like, wow, that's really cool. He's got a son out there. His son wants to be a wrestler. You know what I mean? Very cool. Well, just to be able to share it with my boy, like I, I have not I have a seven-year-old son as well, and he's not so much into pro wrestling. He's a little more shy. Uh, but my, at the time, Jet, you know, was three years old. He's four now, but, uh, you know, completely obsessed with wrestling since, you know, he could walk and pay attention to the television set. And, uh, you know, I'm both my son's heroes, as many dads are to their, their children. But uh, I, I get to be Jet's superhero, which is insane. And to be able to share that moment, like, most fathers get to get their sons like a photo with Mickey Mouse at Disneyland. I got to, you know, walk out with my son on pay-per-view and give him a memory that he's never going to forget. So whose idea like, was it, was that like his idea? Like, Oh dad, I want to come out with the pay-per-view. Uh, it actually happened at an independent show in Canada. You know, uh, I think it was in the winter time. Uh, I was there. My son always wears a singlet. Uh, it's just he, he he wants to be ready in case a match breaks out at any time. Even when we go to the grocery <laughs> store, he'll have it on under his clothes like Superman. And, uh, you know, we were at that show. And because there's wrestlers there, he's walking around the back in his singlet, you know, wrestling around with some of the wrestlers and just enjoying himself because he looks up to everybody. He's an enormous fan, like I said. And my music hit. And at home, he always kind of puts on his tablet and sticks it like the Titan Tron does my entrance. And we, we caught him doing it a bunch of times. And my music hit and he looked at me and I, I looked at the entrance away and I said, you know, if you want, go ahead. And he didn't think twice, man. He went out, hit that entrance and, uh, you know, he soaked it all in, loved all the uh, admiration from the fans at that, that local promotion called Destiny Wrestling in Toronto. So Scott DeMore saw footage from that and he, uh, you know, he, he was the one that suggested it. You know, I'm very thankful for that. Really just a different approach a different thing i mean we probably haven't seen that since steamboat you know, versus flair he brings out his son i mean we hadn't seen that in a long time very cool very different yeah and now like you've seen it happen a couple times now i think pentagon son has come out you know in in a mini version of him with gear and stuff like that and it's just it's just awesome that you know we get to share this because that that when you hear stories of the way wrestling used to be it used to be a very closed environment where like families weren't even allowed in and stuff like that or they, if they were it wasn't to be talked about and stuff like that now it's out in the open and stuff and it's it's just cool to share that stuff yeah it used to be like oh the the, the family's there but they're on the camera side nobody sees them they are kind of hidden and now you know people know like you know, the family's there and it's celebrating and even jet maybe even get involved a little bit you know pretty cool yeah, if, if he has his way, he will be world champion in no time. So, <laughs> <laughs> any future plans uh, for him? Uh, honestly, I'm just enjoying the ride with him, and uh, you know, if the obsession continues and he chooses that he wants to do this, you know, at a time when you know he can make such decisions, I will support it fully. You know, I just want my children to be happy and do what they love. So, now was that recent? There was a video. He nailed you. He got you good. It was at home, but was that recent or was that or was that old? <laughs> That was uh, right before Christmas last year, I believe. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh, he 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 killed me over pretty good. I didn't expect it, but uh, that's that's the issue with him watching Impact Wrestling. He sees somebody like Mike Bailey and wants to you know copy his moves, and you know he just caught me off guard. Right. It was funny too because it almost seemed like set up. Like, oh no! Then I saw your reaction. I was like, nope, <laughs> it wasn't set up. As far as that no. low blow, yeah. No, luckily my wife is always filming him because he always does something, you know, of, of value or worth or right. something that's funny that were memor memorable. And uh, unfortunately, that was at my expense that time. So. Isn't that crazy? Your phone now, or you may probably your wife's phone too, has like twenty thousand videos and and pictures and stuff of the kids. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no missed opportunities anymore. Whereas before, you know, you needed a Polaroid or something or go get the film developed. You know, times have changed. Yes, yes. So, speaking of like the title run and getting used to it, what do you think about Slam Anniversary? You versus Eric Young. I mean, it's the twentieth anniversary. I mean, it's a huge, huge event. What do you think about not only the event, the show, but main eventing? Uh, well, there was a lot of pressure on me for that show, specifically not not from anybody else specifically, but for myself. You know, I hold my myself to a very high standard at all times. And I think as champion, you know, that's something that benefits me because if I put all this pressure on myself, I'm gonna 
usually over deliver hopefully and uh that was no different that show was completely stacked from the top to the bottom you had like returns nostalgia ultimate x queen of the mountain a bunch of craziness and for me to go out last you know you think the deck stacked against you and uh you know eric is such a good wrestler like he's gonna he should go down to the history books as one of the greatest in impact wrestling right beside aj styles as far as i'm concerned and uh you know we went out there and when i was talking about it i just kind of wanted to write a love letter of my fandom of impact wrestling which is why i sprinkled in the best moonsault ever and you know he hit the stroke and we did it we did a few other things we just wanted to kind of tip our caps at the first 20 years and to be able to be the person that was main eventing on that show to kind of you know tip our caps at the history of this company and what it meant to us you know it, it means a great deal to me yeah that was a couple of homages in there at right? the stroke of course uh, you know to jeff jarrett a little homage there the man that started it all with TNA and, and now Impact. But such a great match. You said it was pressure. Was there pressure from the back, too? Like, maybe it's got the more something like, hey, you know, this is a big spot here, 20-year anniversary. We got all these video packages. Uh, go out there and kill it because you guys are the main event. No, I, I think, like, in the first three years I've been here, I've kind of established that I'm going to hold myself to that standard above and beyond what anybody else could. So nobody ever really needs to remind me, but uh, yeah, there was a ton of pressure on me. I, I think anytime I'm stepping in the ring now, holding this championship, I have so much pressure on me specifically, not just for like the in ring part of it. Cause like I, I'd always do that, but because I'm representing the company as well as the locker room, and I have so much love and respect for everybody in this locker room that I just I, I want to overproduce and over deliver every single time, if not for me, for them. What do you think about Eric Young in general? I mean, obviously, you know, violent by design, you got a problem with it, but it just Eric Young, the wrestler. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Eric Young. Uh, he started where I started, and he got signed right as I started wrestling. So all I heard about was the legend of Eric Young and how amazing he was on the independent circuit where I was. And, you know, I've clearly followed his career my entire, you know, time and fandom. And uh, like the one thing that I think Eric Young is overlooked for is how he's kind of like a chameleon. Like I, I called him a Swiss Army knife of pro wrestling. Like he can do everything. He can make you laugh. He can make you cry. He can make you scared. He can go like 100% balls to the wall in the ring and deliver with anybody. Like you can put that guy in the ring with a broomstick and he's going to deliver every single time. And guys like that sometimes go overrated in this or underrated in this business or overlooked. And uh, I, I unfortunately think he's been one of them at certain times. And hopefully, you know, he gets his due when it's all said and done. To me, he's a perfect guy to main event because, you know, he was there not since the very beginning, but very, very close to the beginning. And he did. You see the maturation process. Don't fire Eric stuff, the jokey stuff, the Team Canada. You know, and you see like, the psycho stuff. I mean, you saw the, the maturation of him. You just saw him become, like you said, the Swiss Army Knife of wrestling. You can do anything. But I thought it was perfect. It was like the old guard, somewhat, who could still go, obviously, versus you and like the new guards. So it was like the perfect main event for me to, to have on the 20th anniversary show. Yeah, the way I was selling it when I was talking about it was that you have somebody that represents probably better than anybody in that locker room, with the exception of maybe Chris Saban, represents that first 20 years of Impact Wrestling that we're celebrating. I'm representing the present. We're going to find out who is going into the future as world champion in the face of the company. And like it, 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 it was a nice way to like put a tagline on it, but it was very true. Also, it was cool. Like we mentioned AJ Styles, he had a video package and he was, you know, saying thank you to TNA, thank you to Impact. I mean, he was talking about the history. So I think it adds a little bit more when everybody's kind of focusing in saying, oh my God, AJ's doing videos. You know, this guy, you know, people are having videos and they're talking up the history of the, of the show. So that's got to throw some extra little pressure, extra little punch at you. Well, it's just knowing that like these people that I looked up to my entire life, the people that were like, you know, integral to the part of me actually pursuing this to be a professional wrestler more than anybody like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle. Those people have eyes on this company still. They're still watching what we do. That adds a little bit of pressure, yes. With guys like, you know, Eric Young, but then you got Moose, who's obviously a, a big proponent uh, or big veteran or whatever you want to say, a big feud for you, a guy that, that you don't get along with. There's another great like wrestler, great feud that you have maybe i know he had a rematch but it's like another match coming down the line i feel like a rematch with moose i think it's inevitably going to happen uh you know the, the issue with like myself and moose is we're both staples of this company so we're going to cross paths no matter no matter what as we go on in this company and it's always going to be special it's always going to be different it's always going to be good because we have such good chemistry together 
there are guys on your radar that you haven't wrestled yet that you would like to in impact? Like guys that you're like, wow, he's great. Let's test myself against this guy. Uh, for like people I've never stepped foot in the ring with, uh, Alex Shelley would be one of the first people I'd pick. Uh, but for people that are on my radar that I think are going to be coming up in the next little bit to challenge for this world championship, like I got my eyes on people like Chris Bay and Ace Austin. And the, the one guy that I think has more momentum than anybody or has been building momentum and, you know, I think will continue to do so is Steve Macklin. Yeah, bag him and tag him, right? Steve Macklin. Yeah. He's a very intense guy, and I think when we get in the ring, it's gonna it, it'll be something special. Even though you know we've never been able to be in the ring together, I can just tell by the way he works and stuff. He brings that intensity that I like and enjoy, and I bring myself. So, I'm a huge fan of him because he's a Jersey guy. I'm a Jersey guy, so it's, you know us Jersey guys, like you Canadians, you know you guys stick together. Us Jersey guys gotta stick together. Yeah, there's a lot of wrestling in, out of New Jersey. Deanna Parazzo as well must be <laughs> big on your yeah. radar as well. So, yeah, there you go. Hey, Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, you got to you know, some, some good ones, some great ones uh, yeah. from Jersey. As far as some of your favorite matches you've had so far, any of them stick out? Obviously, 20-year anniversary, slam anniversary, but any other ones stick out? I mean, the the match with Moose at Rebellion was very special. I thought it was, you know, it overexceeded our expectations. Uh, the TJP Iron Man match is something I'm never going to forget. I think that was the catalyst of really, like, the, the jumping off point for my career being where it is right now. You know, I, I owe a lot to him and what he did and how what he taught me in those matches that we had up until that Iron Man in that Iron Man. And the one, uh, I'll, I'll give you two more. There's there's one that's overlooked from Emergence last year. Uh, myself and Jake something is one of my favorite singles matches of all time. I think uh, for some reason it just flew under the radar with a lot of people. People said it was amazing, but it just didn't get the fanfare I thought it deserved. It's not just for myself, but for Jake something. And myself and Jonah at Hard to Kill was, uh, you know, it, it, there's something for, there's a different kind of match with every single person I've been in the ring with that I just named. And just to be able to kind of, you know, work to their style and still deliver an awesome match and stuff like that, that people enjoyed. Uh, that's that's where I get like the, the juice out of this. That's where I get excited and stuff. So, And against all odds, uh, Joe Deering, Joe Doring, uh obviously former uh, all Japan veteran kind of under the radar somehow, some way being that big, but that was a good match as well. You uh, will knock out drag out at the pay-per-view. It was a very physical matchup that I'm still feeling at this moment <laughs> because it was only a week ago, but uh, yeah, yeah uh, it was just like, like all these matches, all these people, anytime you get in the ring, some, some wrestlers you watch and like the people that I was a fan of, could get in the ring with anybody and they'd have a different kind of match with whoever they were in the ring with. They would work to their style. And uh, like, I'm, I'm talking about like the Kurt Angles and the AJ Styles and those people. Uh, for me, I've always tried to do the same thing. So when I get in the ring with someone like Joe Doring, I'm going to try to bring that physicality like him to show a different side of me to show that I can compete, you know, at what he's good at and stuff like that. You know, I, I might pay for it here or there and it might come back to haunt me one day with this, championship but uh you know it, it's what i enjoy doing beat him at his own game for sure and then of course tomohiro ishii at, at under siege that was another good one nice to win to have on the resume too check that one off yeah both the ishii and the suzuki match that i've had like the the I, just like christian cage those are matches i never thought possible i'm been a huge fan of ishii for so long like he has been the guy that i watch more than anybody in new japan probably him and shingo and uh yeah, just to be able to check that one off my personal bucket list was was great. Yeah, I always say my favorite guys are Okada and Ishii. I, lo I don't know, I love him. It's the Stone Pitbull. He's awesome. It's like a little Rick Steiner esque. You know what I mean? Like a little tough son of a bitch. You know what I mean? Just lo love his style. He's a great wrestler. He's got a presence to him that is undeniable. So as we wind it down, we head towards the finish here. Just got to again mention. Uh, July 15th and 16th, Louisville, Kentucky, Derby City Rumble. A lot of stuff going on for Impact. Give us one last push for, for the big shows. I mean, if you want to, if you if you can come out and buy a ticket to the best live pro wrestling experience, you can, because like I said earlier, there's something for everybody on this show. From the top to the bottom, it's interactive. It's engaging. You will be part of the show. You'll be on television. Uh, and if you can just, you know, tune in every Thursday night, 8 p.m. on Access TV, because... Like I said, everybody on this roster from the top to the bottom has a chip on their shoulder for whatever reason, and we're out to prove that we are the best wrestling product in the world, and I think we do that show in, show out. It's just a, about getting eyes on us because we will retain them every time because we do deliver. 
we will be looking out for the road for to bound for glory coming up this fall obviously which would be rolling into a bound for glory of course everybody louisville kentucky the 15th and the 16th and congratulations on impact wrestling on their 20th for you being the the big star of the night um, but where can everybody find you and see you social media wise on twitter and instagram at walking underscore weapon for everything social media for me josh thank you so much for all the time fellow bret hart fan here of course so uh thank you so much i appreciate it yeah, anytime. Thank you.